This project is de on developing a supercavitating submarine. So we're developing a small scale prototype capable of inducing a fully form formed air cavity around the submarine. And a goal speed of 50 meters has been set in terms of the minimum distance traveled. Also, the device is being designed with left and right um, maneuverability. Uh, so basically, we can control it, and this hasn't been done in any other prototype of this uh, scale. And determining if a fully functioning air cavity has been developed will be quantitatively assessed using both uh, the LiDAR data points and uh, speed measurements. So the design, so this device will be 132 by 14 centimeters. Uh, past and uh, past principles and new technologies will be designed and designs will be used to produce a superior supercavitating device capable of maneuverability and high speeds. Uh, so a flat parabolic uh, cavitator will be implemented at the front of the nose cone. And an array of time of flight sensors uh, will provide the air cavity size and structure measurements for both post trial analysis as well as. Uh, uh, the data provided by these sensors will be interpreted by an onboard system signaling for high speed adjustments in real time. And this will ensure air cavity integrity by reducing the amount of turbulence and also reduces the amount of drag and risk of collapse. Now these outputs or adjustments include adjustments of the uh, cavitator airflow, uh, cavitator positioning and the uh, gimbal motor positioning. Uh, an 8x30 uh, centimeter custom solid fuel engine, which is right here, will be developed for propulsion. A gimbal mechanism uh, comprised of uh, high torque servo motors will adjust lateral pitch, which is left and right. Um, so to ensure stability and accuracy during this movement, a gyroscopic uh, system compo comprised of two ball bearings and a series of springs will be implemented. These are these right here. Um, this allows the interior of the engine section to remain stable relative to the outside environment while well, other aspects of the submarine will be allowed to rotate if it does come to that. Now in terms of materials using an air tank to produce the air cavity, ABS plastic will be used for the 3D printed components. And then aluminum is really the main material and this is for basically the overall outer structure. An Arduino Uno and Kinsey 3.5 computer chip will be used to control all on onboard functions. A battery will be used to power these. Um, our mm -hmm. main component for making these is it going to be a CNC milling machine and it'll be attached with fastener screws. And then we'll also use a LiDAR sensors and these will be uh, placed in an array around the whole entire uh, device, about 40, 30 to 40 sensors. And this will just basically give data points and it sends a beam of light out to the air cavity and then bounces back and then that measures the distance uh, uh, between the exterior and the water. And we also have a pneumatic fitting, so now that's just for the cavitator. And then also rocket candy, which you guys play. Yeah, uh, so rocket candy basically is just homemade rocket fuel. Um, and we only went with that because a normal uh, Class G model rocket engine just isn't powerful enough. Uh, servo is probably going to be 18 G 18 servo, although that is subject to change. The solenoid valve is basically what's going to control the air from escaping so we can bring it up when we want it to. Uh, right now, uh, we've just been spending the last few months to design a model, and now we've come to basically the final design. And we've uh, been creating the different components on SolidWorks. We expect that if designed successfully, the submarine will travel up to 500 meters with speeds in excess of 200 kilometers per hour. Uh, we also believe that left and right controlled maneuverability will be achieved. But testing and construction, as I mentioned earlier, remains to be completed. Um, this, main, this is basically the main engineering challenge involves reducing the turbulence or major oscillation, in particular during steering as water is a lot harder to steer through and we have to basically push that aside with the air. Um, and then, in, so basically we came up with integrating a live feedback system may solve this with the help of LiDAR. And as well, a turbo molecular uh, pump or vacuum uh, can be used in terms of future research. And this allows for the stabilization of the closure region and the recirculation effect, allowing for greater distances traveled. Now, we originally planned to implement this during our this year's project, uh, but that's unlikely sources.